basically this is a reflection. I'm um, I'm the coordinator since 2011 of uh, all the excavation of uh, the third university in Rome, something for which I'm really happy and feel uh, very fortunate. Uh, we have every year around uh, 200 students uh, during our excavation that uh, takes place for around six months in different sites in Rome and in Tuscany. So what I'm um, narrating very briefly to you is uh, something which happens uh, within an academic environment, so it's a protected uh, place uh, where uh, uh, through the years uh, we started dealing uh, with uh, huge amounts of uh, students, uh, graduates, uh, people uh, with uh, different goals, uh, with different needs, uh, and this is uh, exactly what uh, made us uh, uh, starting a specific reflection. Um, I started uh, uh, coordinating uh, uh, these groups uh, coming from a musical environment, so I had this idea of uh, um, teaching, first of all, to the students uh, how to deal in a group, so to get very disciplinated, and then uh, how to uh, let the personal uh, capabilities and intention to grow and uh, to empower the entire group. This was very easy at the beginning. They had all the same interests, the same passion, so uh, they spoke the same language. Uh, what this was more or less what uh, we were doing at the beginning, making very small groups. Uh, um, basic, uh, very basic activities, they had to get into the rhythm. Um, no problems at all, uh, until when uh, this project uh, uh, grew a lot, uh, in terms of that uh, after two or three years, not only we were teaching students, but we had uh, to research, to study the results of our excavation, and to publish, and to communicate. Uh, it means that we kept on uh, working with the same little amount of money uh, Italian University give for excavation to 3,000 euros a year, and that's it. And we had a lot of different tasks going on at the same time still believing in the fact that uh, the academic system should be a democratic system. So we have to accept any student and any uh, young graduate that want to, uh, to take part to the excavation. Um, there was a gap in terms that uh, we started having uh, uh, people uh, uh, with uh, uh, difficulties in uh, behaving, uh, we were not uh, prepared, we were just uh, their archaeologists, uh, and uh, after a while, uh, luckily, and this is what I'm sharing with you just as an archaeologist, uh, we got uh, uh, people with uh, physical disability applying to the excavation. Uh, I must confess that at, at the beginning I was totally opposite in terms that uh, I was scared by the fact that uh, the physical environment is not ready. We have uh, steps, uh, we have barriers, uh, we have uh, the local authorities, the offices in charge of the uh, preservation of the site that provide for us a uh, uh, safety officer. But still, <laughs> I mean, the toilet is a mere, um, how do you call the Turkish toilet? So you need to, uh, we were somehow ready from a psycho human point of view, but the environment was not. Um, and so that was the, the question, when is archeology span for all? Because the academy was telling me, this is democratic, you must accept everybody. But the place was not ready for that. Uh, Agnese, 
the person that broke the rules made this. Unfortunately, she, uh, she this girl, um, decided to be tested so that uh, to stop us feeling worried. And uh, we have an excavation in a catacomb of Rome. And uh, though she uh, barely uh, walked, she had an operation in the States uh, 10 years ago because otherwise she was just moving in a wheelchair. But still nowadays she has to speak. She has her mother bringing her around. She barely see. And she came down his entire set of steps to prove that she wanted to do and that there was no way we could say no this is unsafe please don't it took one hour and 20 minutes for going down together and we made it <laughs> and we made it because uh, uh, I, I, I didn't want it I was oh my god she's going to fall um, it, it was not my responsibility but I felt really anxious for that since she did that, uh, we started working together. We are working together since uh, 2014. She works with us for four months a year. And basically, she, uh, uh, this is our deal. Before starting any excavation, and she comes to three different excavations with us every year, we, Agnese and I, have a full walk around the excavation, checking together what we can do and what we cannot. And this is fair. We have a proper relation, transparent, where now I can say no, but in a context where she knows what she can do, she knows what she wants to do and what she cannot. Um, I think I, I and all the team grew much more than she did, but clearly she learned a lot in this year. Uh, we have a very nice lab uh, about pottery. We deal with urban context, so our labs are having pottery since the Roman times to the modern time. Uh, we make uh, any kind of activity together. <laughs> It's an inclusive experience uh, in terms that uh, we are all together. What I'm telling uh, the people taking part to the project is not uh, be with us, but just uh, you need to do this, uh, go with, uh, just uh, as part of an organized project and schedule. She comes to the excavation now. She sits on the excavation and uh, she's happy with it and we are happy with it because what we learned was exactly to make questions to each other. So I'm not choosing anymore in advance. I'm asking her what she thinks. She tells me finally what she needs. And this is important because at the beginning she felt so fortunate of having a chance of taking part to a social activity, educational activity for several months that she was silent and accepting everything. And this is not fair. So now it's a proper exchange. We somehow sometimes break the rules and she comes and showers with us once in a while, of course, it's a kind of break time for all of us. But uh, uh, we learned to adjust and modify our equipment. So at the beginning we sit standing, and this was uh, not working, but I couldn't understand it. I stand for eight, nine hours, so this is my normal life. I eat standing while going from an excavation to the other. And in the end, I realized she told me, and we found a proper way of sitting. Sit with. And this 
this was an important uh, goal of this relation. Because though we still manage 2,000 euros <laughs> per six months of field work, but we are becoming capable of adjusting and changing slowly our physical environment. Uh, compared to all the other experiences that I uh, heard today, this is very little, and it's not a burden social experience if in a protected environment, the educational one. But what I found really interesting is that uh, it's a way of broadening a little society, but that is still a society. Every person taking part in the excavation can then apply the same tools and strategies to the broad society. So this is inclusive from my point of view. This was fundamental for me because I learned to separate all our goals. If at the beginning I was that worried, it was that because I have to teach, I have to research, and I have to publish and communicate. And yes, I have no interest in either in researching or in communicating. She wants to learn. So this is our relation. I don't need to mix all the three either. There's still a point which is not solved, the economic one. Uh, this is a, a project that uh, rose spontaneously, grew within our little community, but the physical environment is not changing. We made little tuning, but what I think we must conceive are the archaeological field work where barriers are not the basic. So that everybody can enter, we can always try to fix your needs, my needs, but this is the democratic environment I realized. So the switching was from, this is what you, we, we have and you must adjust, not anymore. The environment must adjust to our needs. This is it. Thank you.